Is there anything unique about human beings? There is. We're the only creatures with fully developed moral sentiments. Moral decisions. But I wanted to go further than to say our brains make us moral. I want to know if there's a chemistry of morality. I want to know if there was a moral molecule. It's called oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone secreted by the pituitary gland and is responsible for trust. Paul Zak has shown in studies that people with raised levels of oxytocin are more trusting of someone they've never met than those with baseline levels. Here's how he did it. So we recruit some people for an experiment. They'll get $10 if they agree to show up. Then we give them lots of instruction and we never ever deceive them. Then we match them in pairs by computer. And in that pair, one person gets a message saying, do you want to give up some of your $10 you earned for being here and ship it to someone else in the lab? But the trick is, you can't see them, you can't talk to them, you only do it one time. Now, whatever you give up gets tripled in the other person's account. It's going to make them a lot wealthier. And they get a message by computer saying, person one sent you this amount of money, do you want to keep it all, or do you want to send some amount back? But what benefits can studying the inner workings of trust have for modern society? Paul Zach sees it as a potential way to reduce world poverty. In the early 2000s, that countries with a higher proportion of trustworthy people are more prosperous. So in these countries, more economic transactions occur and more wealth is created, alleviating poverty. So poor countries are, by and large, low-trust countries. So if I understood the chemistry of trustworthiness, I might help alleviate poverty. But reducing world poverty is not the only concern. Companies see oxytocin as the ability to sell liquid trust, and they're taking advantage of it. Dr. Holly Phillips talks about what could be seen as an unethical application of oxytocin. A recent study found men with low social competence demonstrated more empathy after a few squirts of oxytocin in a nasal spray. Dr. Holly Phillips of WCBS TV is here with more on what's called the cuddle chemical. Great to see you, Dr. <laughs> Good Phillips. Morning, Rebecca. And this cuddle chemical, it's oxytocin. How does it work? What does it do? Where do we find it? Sure. Well, oxytocin is actually a naturally occurring hormone. It's secreted by the pituitary gland in our brains. Now, uh, women secrete more of the hormone than men, and it's usually secreted most around childbirth. And it's thought to really help with bonding, uh, empathy with others, communication. Um, and part of the reason it's secreted so much during childbirth is it helps the mother bond with the child and form those attachments after birth, but it might also have some other uses. <laughs> other uses, for example, like making men nicer. This potential application of oxytocin has clear unethical uses. The military could implement it in war to make our enemies more passive and therefore easier to defeat. New research into a hormone our bodies make every day is giving some couples a renewed spark. Here's how it works. And those uh, dissolve into the tongue. Oxytocin is a hormone produced in the brain by the pituitary gland. While best known for sending pregnant women into labor, it's also what allows humans to connect with one another. If a couple is struggling with bonding issues, with intimacy issues, it could be as a result of inadequate levels of the hormone, oxytocin. The treatment protocol uses these little squares of oxytocin that dissolve under the tongue taken once a day. People that may be more withdrawn and self-centered are starting to find themselves more open and more concerned with the people around them. Dr. Love says eight hugs a day. Eight hugs a day, you'll be happier and the world will be a better place. Of course, if you don't like to touch people, I can always shove this up your nose. 